Hello and welcome back to Picky Board Gamer. My name is Victor Rakos and today I will explain the game The Voyages of Marco Polo. This is a very classic game for 2 to 4 players that will take you around 2 hours to finish in a 4 player count. Let's move to the table and see how the game is played. In the game, players take the role of Marco Polo's associates who travel and assist him in his great journeys. During the game, players are gathering resources through the various actions on the board. Players perform these actions by using their dice which they roll at the beginning of every round. Players will be using these resources to complete as many contracts as possible, granting them victory points. Also, by traveling around the various cities depicted on the board, players will be unlocking more actions increasing their options, but also significant bonuses that will be applied at the beginning of every round. At the end of the game, there is a final scoring in which players gain additional victory points by satisfying secret objectives. The player with the most victory points will be announced the winner in the voyages of Marco Polo. At first, place the board in the middle of the table. Place one 50 hundred card per each player next to space 50 of the scoring track. Shuffle the gold cards and create a face down stack next to the board as well. Also, next to the board, create piles with the resources of the game. We have coins, camels, silk, salt and gold, with the last three also referred as goods. Small tokens count as one unit of resource, while large ones count as three. The top part of the board depicts cities identified by their names that are also connected by roads. The map also depicts a number of oases. Seven of the cities have spaces for city cards. After you shuffle these cards, randomly fill each one of these space with a card facing upwards. At this point, you must also place one random outpost bonus tile to each one of these large cities with a card facing upwards, like I show you here. There are also six small cities with a space for a city bonus tile. If you are playing the normal game, you need to place these bonus tiles to their corresponding space according to the letter depicted on them. In the advanced mode, however, you shuffle all of the bonus tiles and you distribute them randomly. Next, in a 4 players game, you place the 5 black dice in this space here. The value of these dice is irrelevant. In a 3 players game, however, you use one die less. And you must use a die of an unused color onto this specific space. If you're playing with two players, you only use three black dice, you place another die of the other unused color here, and the second die of the first color onto this space here. All of these dice should have value one on top, and they will not be removed throughout the game. Next, take the contract tiles with the red seal, shuffle them and create five equal stacks of six tiles each. With the remaining tiles, you create a special stack which should be placed a bit far from the rest of the stacks. These five stacks correspond to the five rounds of the game, so for the first round, you take any one of these stacks and you place them onto these spaces here. At this point, each player selects a color and takes the board and the corresponding components. Then players choose a player at random to be the starting player who also takes this hourglass token. The first player then takes 7 coins from the supply and then moving clockwisely, the second player will take 1 coin more than the previous player. So the second player here will take 8 coins. Players place their 9 trading posts in this area here and each player receives a random starting contract which is placed in one of the two contract spaces here. Each player also starts the game with two camels which are placed here. At the beginning of every round, so even during setup, players roll their dice and place them into this area here. Very important! If a player rolls a total of less than 15, they gain compensation for the difference in camels or coins. This is not the case here, but if I rolled a 12 in total, I would gain 3 camels and or coins from the supply. Each player is then dealt 2 gold cards which they keep secret from other players. However, if you are playing the advanced game, then deal each player with 4 cards and after players check their cards, they keep 2 of them and they discard the other 2. 
Next, each player has to pick one of the eight characters. Make note that Mercator X Tabris has three copies and you always use the one applicable to your player count. This one is for two players, this one for three and this one for four. So I would use this copy. Now there are two different ways to make this selection. In the normal mode, the first player always takes Rashid ad-Din Sinan and then moving clockwisely, the second player takes Matteo Polo if there is a third player, they take Berke Khan, and if there is a fourth player, they take the applicable copy of Mercator X Tabris. In the advanced mode, you take all the eight characters, you give them a shuffle, and then you flip one character more than the number of players. Then, starting with the last player and moving counterclockwisely, each player selects one of the characters, and the last one is returned to the box. Then players place one of their pawns on space 50 of the scoring track, which counts as zero for setup purposes. Also players place another one of their pawns on the city of Venice. All characters are unique and they have abilities that are all written in the rulebook. Niccolo and Marco Polo, for example, plays with two figures on the map, so this player would take the third figure and place it also in Venezia. Also, effects that depict the exclamation mark are effects that apply at the beginning of every round. So the owner of this character would start the game with an additional camel. The game is now ready to start. The game is played in five rounds. At the beginning of each round, players roll their dice and take start of round bonuses. Then the round passes to a main action phase in which all players starting with the first player and then continuing clockwisely must perform one main action by placing at least one of their dice to an action space on the board. Players can also perform any number of bonus actions either before or after performing their main action. So a player during their turn can start maybe by performing some bonus actions, then they must perform a main action, and finally they can perform some more bonus actions before ending their turn and game proceed to the next player. So the game continues like that until all of the players have used all of their dice. When that happens, it's the end of the round. Speaking of main actions, these are all depicted by these dice symbols on the board. When we perform an action, the value of the die plays a very important role in what we can do with the action. Some of the action spaces like this one require the player to play more than one die. When we play multiple dice for an action, then the die that matters is the one with the lowest value. In this case, it would be one. Important, action spaces with a blue background can be used by multiple players during a round. So, for example, another player could place their dice here and perform this action. However, in order to do so, the player must also pay coins to the general supply equal to the die with the lowest value. So, in this example, the red player should pay two coins to the general supply before proceeding with the action. Important, this cost has to be paid in advance. So, if a player cannot pay the cost, they cannot perform the action, even if the action would award the player with money enough to pay this cost. Also, you should know that if a player already has dice in an action space, it cannot be selected again by the same player. Except on action spaces with a blue background, all other action spaces can only be used once by the player who goes there first. All city cards also provide an action space. However, players can only use these spaces if they have a trading post on that city. We will see how players place their trading posts later on. Now we can proceed with the details of a game round. At the beginning of every round, please follow these steps. The first step is to determine which player takes the first player token. It is always the player that has used the travel action last. In this case, it's the red player since their dice is on the top. The red player takes the first player token and will perform first in the action phase of the round. Of course, this step is skipped in the first round of the game. If no player has used the travel action in the previous round, then the player who had the first player token keeps it for the next round as well. In the next step, players gain start of round bonuses, which, as I said, depict the exclamation mark. 
players gain such bonuses from their characters, but also small city bonuses where the player has one of their trading posts. These are very self-explanatory. This one grants the player 5 coins, this one 2 goods that must be different, these 3 camels, and that one grants the player with any small city bonus where the player doesn't have one of their trading posts. So, in our example, the red player gains 5 money, but also they can trigger and gain the bonuses of any other tile without one of their trading posts, like this one or that one. In the next step, players retrieve all of their dice from all action spaces and if any black dice were used, these are returned to the general supply in the middle of the board. As a last step, players roll all of their dice and place them here and don't forget to get compensation in case you have rolled a total of less than 15 as we explained during setup. Now we shall explain all the main actions. This is the Grand Bazaar where the players gain resources. If I play the required three dice here, I can gain a reward from the same row and from the column which corresponds to the value of my dice, which in this case is four. So I can gain three gold bars, but instead I could also choose an award of a previous level. So if I need camels, I could choose to gain two gold bars and two camels. In the second action row, the player gains silk, the third one mainly grants the player with salt, and the last row grants the player with camels. With the next action, players gain new contracts to place in their two slots on their board. By performing this action, the player can take one or two contracts from the available ones on the board, and these contracts must be within the range of the dice value. So with a 5, the player can select any one or two tiles from these here. If a tile from the 5 space is selected, the player also gains a coin or a camel. And if the tile from the 6 space is selected, then the player can gain either two coins or two camels. Let's say the player selects these two tiles. These tiles have to be placed in the two slots. If there are not enough empty slots, the player can choose to discard one or more of their previous contracts, moving it to the bottom of the special contract stack in order to make space for the newly acquired tiles. Very important, you cannot discard a tile you have just taken from the board. You can discard it the next time you gain tiles. After selecting the tiles, all remaining tiles on the board are shifted to the leftmost empty spaces and the empty spaces are not replenished at the moment. Players that choose this action in the future have to select from the remaining ones, even if there is only one tile on the board. However, if at the beginning of the player's turn there is no contract tile on the board, then before selecting an action, you place the top two contract tiles from the special contract stack on the first two spaces of the board. With these actions, the player places the die in the leftmost empty space and the value has to be greater than or equal to the value of the previous die. Then the player takes any one good and also two camels. With the next action, the player simply gains five coins from the supply. This is a blue space action, so if I play the three value die here, I first have to pay three coins to the general supply for reusing an already used action and then gain five coins from the supply. With the travel action, players buy moves for their figure so as to travel on the map. The number of moves depends on the value of the played dice. With a value of three, the player can move either one, two or three spaces with their figure by paying the corresponding amount of money which is depicted in the selected space. So I can move my figure three times, but I choose to pay only seven money and move my figure twice. With each movement, the player moves their character to an adjacent location using roads. Locations are either a large or a small city or these oases. Whenever you use a road that depicts a money cost or a cost in camels, you must be able to pay the corresponding resources before making the move. Whenever a player ends their movement in a large or a small city not containing one of their trading posts, a player can place one from their supply for free. Players can use any trading post from the ones on their board. However, remember that the one that worths 10 victory points has to be used last and the one that worths 5 victory points has to be the one before the last. 
These victory points are immediately awarded once the player builds the 8th and 9th trading post. In addition to that, the player who places a trading post first in a large city also gains the rewards depicted in the large city tile and then the tile is removed from the game. These tiles are quite easy to explain. With that one the player takes 2 silk. With this one the player takes 2 camels. With that one the player takes the top tile from the special stack. And with the one I just took, the player can move an additional move with their character. So the red player could move here by spending 3 camels and since that's the end of a separate movement, place one more of their trading posts here. With this bonus here, the player takes one available black die from the board, which is immediately rolled and placed with the player's remaining supply. The player can use this die on any of the following turns. When placing a trading post in a small city, the player immediately receives the bonus depicted on the tile and will be receiving the same bonus at the beginning of every round. After a player places a trading post in a large city, starting from their next turn, as a main action they can place one of their dice here and perform the action depicted on the card. The value of the die always plays a role in what you gain from the bonus. This one grants the player 2 money for each trading post played on the board. With the 4, I could score up to 4 of my played trading posts and gain 8 money. However, since I only have 2 trading posts, I will get 4 money. If I had played a 1 value, then I could only score 1 of my played trading posts and thus gain 2 money. In cards like this one, the player has to spend the depicted resources in order to gain the depicted bonus on the right. The value of the die here indicates the number of times the player can do this transaction. So with a 3, I could earn up to 24 money by spending 3 camels and 3 silk. With this one, the player can spend a victory point to gain money or 3 money to gain victory point. On such cards, the value of the die will indicate the exact bonus. 3 is between 1 and 4, so the player immediately gains the bonuses of one small city bonus where the player has a trading post. Beijing is a large city which is a bit different. The first player who places a trading post here will place it on the space depicting the 10 victory points, the next one on the 7th space and so on and so forth. On top of that, only players with the trading posts in Beijing will score victory points for their remaining goods at the end of the game. Now let's explain the free actions which are all depicted on the player's aid. Players may use any number of free actions during their turn and even perform the same free action multiple times. As a free action, a player can complete one of their active contracts. The player must spend the required resources and then gains the bonuses depicted at the right side of the tile. Then the tile is flipped and placed here in the area of completed contracts. The second free action is that the player can spend one camel to re-roll one of their dice. The third free action is that the player can spend two camels in order to add or subtract one point from one of their dice. So I can make a 5, either a 4 or a 6. But you may never turn a 6 to a 1 or a 1 to a 6. Also, by spending three camels, a player can buy a black die from the board, if available, which is then rolled and placed with the rest of their dice. The last free action is to play one of your dice onto this space here and take three money. While on the board, this is not a main action but a free action and as this symbol indicates, it can be used by any number of players multiple times and without paying a cost if it's preoccupied. Nobody actually occupies this space. Also, the value of the die is completely irrelevant. After all players have used all of their dice, the round comes to an end. At the end of a round, you discard all remaining contracts on the board to the bottom of the special contract stack. Then you use any normal contract stack to replenish the board before you start the next round. If there is no normal contract stack remaining to replenish the board, then the game is over and we move to scoring. 
At the end of the game, players score some more points to add to their score accumulated so far. The blue player has 60 victory points and got this card after completing a revolution in the scoring track. At first, players gain one victory point for every 10 coins remaining in their supply, so I get another point. Then, only players with a trading post in Beijing gain the victory points depicted beneath their trading post and they can convert their remaining goods to victory points in a 2 to 1 ratio. So the blue player can spend 4 goods and gets 2 more victory points, so 9 victory points in total for the Beijing presence. Players then count their completed contracts and the player who has completed the most gains 7 victory points. If players tie, then all tied players gain 7 victory points. Finally, players reveal their secret goal cards. Each goal card depicts a pair of cities and awards the player with victory points if the player has trading posts in both of those cities. The first card depicts Karachi and Kashgar. The blue player has trading posts in both of these cities and gains 5 victory points. The second card depicts Karachi and Anxi. The player doesn't have a trading post in Anxi, so these 7 victory points are lost. Finally, you take all 4 cities depicted in both of the cards and you see how many trading posts you have. Then the player gains victory points according to the diagram in the bottom of these cards. The blue player has two trading posts among all the depicted cities, so gains three additional victory points. After that, the player with the most victory points wins the game. In case of a tie, the tied player with the most camels wins the tie, and if the tie still exists, then all tied players share their victory. The eight characters add a very nice flavor to the game as they grant players with unique advantages. In the next chapter, I will explain the rest seven characters. Let's start with Mercator X Tabriz. In a four players game, the owner of this character gains an additional specific good or camel every time an opponent is performing the market action. If the opponent uses the silk row, then the owner of Mercator X Tabriz will take one silk from the supply. If the opponent uses the salt row, the player will gain a salt from the supply, and so on and so forth. In a three players game, the owner of Mercator X Tabriz also gains a camel every time an opponent uses this action. And finally, in a two players game, whenever an opponent is using this action to gain five coins, the owner of Mercator X Tabris gains two coins. The owner of Kublai Khan starts the game with their figure placed in Beijing instead of Venice and also places one of their trading posts on the space depicting 10 victory points. The owner of Rashid ad-Din Sinan never rolls their dice at the beginning of every round. They simply place their dice here, and just before performing an action, they simply select the value of each die. The owner of Matteo Polo has two important start-of-round bonuses. They always take the white die, which is also rolled and placed with the other dice, and also on every turn the player takes the top contract from the special stack and places it onto their board. The owner of Johann Scarprini can spend one move to teleport their figure from an oasis space to any other oasis space on the board. So if, for example, the owner of this character had their figure in Alexandria and had three moves, they could do one move to here, then the second one teleport here, and with the third move, move to Karakorum. Also, the owner of this character gains three coins at the beginning of every round. The owner of Berkey Can can use occupied action spaces without paying the money penalty. This only counts for actions printed on the board and not the ones on city cards. Finally, the owner of Willem von Rubruck starts the game with two additional trading posts which have to be used after the normal ones have been used first. And if the player manages to place all 11 trading posts on the board by the end of the game, they will gain an additional 10 victory point bonus. Also, that player does not have to end their movement in a city in order to place one of their trading posts. They can simply drop them as they pass. So with a two-point movement, that player could move to Xi'an, place one of their trading posts there, and then continue to Beijing and place another one of their trading posts. That was the video for today and thanks for watching. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. It's very important to keep me going. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.